Yeah, I'm going to do something today that's come up several times. People have asked. <clears throat> I've been planning on doing it. Haven't got around to it, but right now I have the opportunity to do it. Everybody's been asking questions about the tractors and different things about it. And I've shown some things and people ask questions about. So I've been going to do a history of the tractors. How we got them, where they came from, all that information about them. I've been wanting to do this, and I've been going to do, want to do one of the tractors we used to own. But I'm trying to figure out how to put that together, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that one first, then go into the tractors we have and stuff like that. But right now I got the perfect opportunity to make these videos, and I can show kind of comparisons because... Yeah, you can barely see the white back there. I got all three right here in one location, so this is going to be the simplest way to do this. So we're going to start with the Ford, since it's back here because yesterday we put a new tire on it. As you can see, really no tread left to it. Got these treads wore down. Like I said, I got a problem with this wheel's not lined right and it wobbles going down the road, so it's scrubbing. Is it a big problem or not? I mean, there's about 5,000 hours on this tire right now. That's the second set of tires I put on this tractor. And as they originally came with Goodyear Dynatorque 2s, which is a long bar, short bar. They'd have a long bar here and a short bar here and then a long bar here and a short bar here. In my opinion, worst tires ever made. Didn't like them. They didn't even stay on here 1,500 hours. And then I put Firestone 23 degree radials on. And like I said, I got about 5,000 hours out of that set of tires. Then I put another set of tires on. So there's roughly 5,000 hours on these tires. But the problem is, you know, probably eight, 10 years ago, I cut the sidewall back to my truck. No, it wasn't that long ago. Cause I had my new, had this red truck here now. I backed my old truck into this one. So I bought that truck in 2000, yeah, about 10 years. No. Yeah, I bought that truck in 2015, so about eight years. And it made a mark in the sidewall. Well, in about three, four months, that cracked out. So I ended up putting a new tire on this side. So that's why this tire has so much more tread than this tire. Well, I can't afford another new set of tires. So I mentioned in the video before, I seen the guy that mounts the tires for me at the auction there a week or so ago. Asked him if he knew anybody that had a good used tire, decent tread, and he had two of them. He had this one, this is a Goodyear. I don't know which tire it is. Oh, super, super traction radial. And he had an Alliance. Now the Alliance had a little more tread to it. But he kind of pushed me towards this tire. He's trying to point out that the sidewall was a better sidewall on this tire compared to the Alliance. And the Alliance could have been just ran over something. But he had some gouges and a couple of treads like right in here. Like, you know, just didn't hurt nothing but there was marks on it. So I decided to go with the uh, Goodyear because I think the tread depth matches that one a little bit better. So he came out yesterday and we got that mounted. Not that I was concerned, like I told him, anytime he has time, rainy day, which yesterday was, on a Sunday even. And all I care is I had this done by, you know, when I'm trying to get corn off. Because that tire is more than enough to make hay. But I need problem I had when I was plowing that tractor just had no traction to make turns on greasy mud and you would think something he was some of these ain't too bad but they're getting down there the problem with this rim is and I probably could straighten it out but I'm leery once you take these things loose once they're worn to a place they never really want to stay tight and well, you can see here, like this, this block here, they actually pull up onto this ring and it kind of wedges on there. Well, what's probably happened here 
is one got tightened more than the other and it's got it cocked. Now even he says they never really get these welded in right. So these could be off. And what I would have to do is loosen them up, turn the wheel. You put a block right here and wherever, whatever like touches the block to be the furthest out, you turn that till it's on top. And then you tighten up the bottom ones to help pull that over. Well, like I say, it's been this way for so long. I'm afraid them blocks, I've replaced all these blocks one other time. And I don't know if these are worn in like they are. I'm just leery about taking it loose and not be able to keep it tight. And if it's going to wear a tire like that in 5,000 hours, is it really that big of a deal? It is a pain in the ass to ride on the road, but it's got a little bit of a jump of hop to it because of that but we'll see maybe someday i'll get courage enough to do that but but this tractor here is a 1984 model ford 7710 we bought this tractor brand new in july of 87 it came out of kennedy new york and by 87, they had gone to the new cab design, more of the squared roof. This, I guess they call this the Q cab. I forget what the other one is called, but I think by the time they went the other cab, it was the it'd be a 7710 Series 2. And that's the one I wanted to buy. The local dealer had a 7710 Series 2 four-wheel drive sitting on the lot. They wanted 36000 for it. My dad didn't like that price. They had this one. Like I said, it came out of a dealership up in Kennedy, New York. I believe that they were closing at the time. I don't think they're open anymore. But they, Ford had bigger discounts on this because they wanted to clean them off the lots. We paid 22000 for this tractor. It had 86 hours on it. had all the warranties and stuff to it. And so that's what we went with. They told me from delivering it with the six suitcase weights and the tires were completely full of fluid. I don't, and that's what gets me. I thought there's like 80 gallons in these tires and then we only took a little over 55 gallons out of that tire yesterday. I don't remember taking that much fluid out of them, but maybe we did at one point. But anyway, the way this tractor was delivered is 12,000 pounds. And right now, this tractor is sitting about you know, just over 12,000 hours. The tachometer shows 1,200 and I think it just turned 1,282 hours or something. But it's rolled over once, so that's 11,000. But I had to replace the tachometer with about 675 hours on it. So it puts me up... Yeah, 12. Yeah. It'll... I gotta go look. Just a minute. Get all these numbers in the head. I'm getting screwed up. It's 1,383 hours. So it's 11,383 hours. And another 600. Yeah, it's over 12,000. About 12,050 hours on this tractor. Give or take. The problem is having at the time there is a short cable that goes from here down onto your oil pump shaft and then this is your tachometer cable. I kept shearing these cables in here. Come to find out it was something up in the tachometer that was seizing and then it would strip that. Eventually it broke the input into the tachometer up in there and that's why how I figured it out finally got got that changed. Uh, this motor is the second motor in this tractor. Oh, like I, said, I don't even remember how many hours was on it. And like I said, it's in that 6,000 hour range. And I started blowing, puking all kinds of white smoke out of the crankcase breather. And I don't know if I was actually getting coolant into the oil at that point. Let me see, so long ago. But three out of the four mechanics I talked to said the block is cracked. One said it could be the head gasket. The common thing at the time 
Maybe get a better view on the other side. The original motor. Okay, you can see here, see all this raised ribbing here? That's the update. The original motor was smooth. And the common thing is, I guess the theory is, it allows more flex and eventually cracks the block. The newer ones have all this raised webbing for reinforcement and it's supposed to be better. So we did, I had the option, the guy that does most of my big work like this, well, even the other three mechanics I talked to, the options were putting a short block in here, which would be the, a block that they bored out, put sleeves in, new pistons, new crank, new valves, the head redone, everything, but you'd have to take all both intake and exhaust manifolds off the other motor, the injection pump, uh, the turbo, all that, you're going to have to take off the old motor. And that would be a $5,000 job. A brand new crate motor, I believe, was $7,800 at the time. And the only thing you have to change over is a starter, your power steering pump, And I think that's the major, the only major things you had to change over. So you're getting all new injectors, new injector pump, new turbo, all that new for another 2,500 bucks. And at that time, that turbo was like 800 bucks. Injection pump was like 1,200 bucks. So it was kind of no brainer. It was a slap in, slap out. And so like I got about 6,000 hours on this motor. Uh, The only problems I've ever had with this tractor, put two clutches in it. The first clutch, I want to say the first clutch was less than a thousand hours. It sheared the hub off the uh, fly or clutch plate. And then the second clutch, I was having problems shifting your wood. I mean, it's been probably 2,000 hours ago since I put the clutch in this. And... Which I'm surprised it's only been that many clutches with the amount of round baling. I mean, you're stopping for every round bale. The amount of, I pick up most of the bales with this tractor. So, I mean, this tractor's always doing clutch work. Uh, had to replace the dual power on a Ford. It's called a dual power on the International. It's called a torque amplifier. I had to replace that once. I was getting ready to go plow at one time and I was going up the road all of a sudden it had just come to almost a dead stop. No matter what gear I put it in, it could only go about two miles an hour. I got it up into the yard over at the heifer barn and and uh like I say ended up being a, the dual power clutches or whatever went out of it. Uh, I probably should have told when we went up to look at this tractor up in New York. They were actually, this was actually out on a demo because somebody had bought a new tractor, but it didn't have air conditioning in it. And I don't know if they bought the four wheel drive or what, but their tractor was in the shop getting the air conditioning installed in it and they were letting them use this tractor in the meantime. But right now this tractor has no air conditioning in it because the, one of the main lines rotted out years ago, and it was like a $300 line back then. And I always had problems keeping a charge in it, so I didn't give a shit about it anymore. And when I had this motor put in, I told Joe, whatever you take off for the air conditioning doesn't need to go back on. So that's why there's no air conditioning pump. Everything's up in the cab yet, from the cab up where the lines connect, but nothing with the lines or anything on the tractors there anymore. So... But like I say, this became the main tractor. This this the tractor does everything. It's done everything. It ran the chopper for years. It was the big tractor. And uh, like I say, still my main go-to. I like this tractor a little better overall control-wise. I like this tractor better for power. But the controls are more in a better place. They're... I, maybe I'm just more used to them. I just prefer the controls in this tractor more. Uh, at times, you know, I'm not happy because I got the cab and no air conditioning in it. I, even right now, the fan doesn't work like it's supposed to. I don't know. 
Pretty sure it's not the fan motor. I got to get it up there and tear that cab off, cap off, and look at it. And I think there's a relay or something up there. In fact, when I put the new fan motor in here, it got it wired backwards. So my slow speed has got slow, medium, and purge. And my purge is my slow speed now. So there's two wires that got mixed up, but there's like a coil resistor thing on there or something. If I remember right from when I looked up before, that might be bad. And like I said, I just never got, I mean, been more than enough most of the time just having the windows open, so. But. Oh, and this tractor, from the factory, I guess it's rated at 86 horse. When we got the tractor, the original Lee was putting out 95 when we got it. When we took it back at 500 hours for basically like the 100 hour checkup or whatever. They dynoed it again. It was 99 horse. I believe, I remember right, when Joe put this motor in and he dynoed it, broke it in. It was 102 is what he put on it. Put it at. So it's probably about 100 in that 100, 205 horsepower range now. Now these 12,000 hours on this tractor, I've done 99% of them. Maybe more than that. I mean, my dad drove this tractor one time. You know, he grew up with horses and two-cylinder John Deere's and four to eight ends. The first night we had it here, he got up into it. He drove it in the yard ahead about 100 feet, maybe backed it up 100 feet and got out and complained it was too damn high. And so he just, whether he wanted to or not, he just never got back into it. I drove it ever since. And other than, you know, taking it to the mechanics, nobody else has ever really run this tractor. And so, so I've done most of the work with it. You know, like I said, I probably put four or five sets of front tires on it. Biggest thing was, is tractor this big, you don't want the the three ribbed because you got one big rib here and these two smaller ones, and all the weight sits on there. This one's doing the same thing though; it's cracking out. This was a four rib. This tire used to look like that one. You can see even this one's wearing down in the center more. And it's getting cracked here. Let me see. This one is uh. The Carlisle. That one's a BKT. I'm pretty sure that one's the Carlisle. I think it's a toss up. I mean, asphalt work is never good for a tractor tire. So, but I guess I don't know what else to say about it. And that's the gist of this tractor. Like I said, we bought it new. And the only tractor I think my dad ever bought new. But, yep, that's going to be the end of part one here. This is the history of the, the Ford 7710. So thanks for watching. We'll catch up to you later.